Uncle Ray! What's up, Mike? Boom! There he is. There he is. What's up? Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back again, again. <laughs> like, again, again. Again, yeah. again. He's back again, again, folks. Right. Uh, yeah, man. I, I love... Thank you, Mighty Mighty. Thank you for those claps. I am going to... I'm gonna silence the alerts just for now. I gotta remember that. <laughs> Somebody remind me to turn the alerts back on for the raid train because it's really important to have the raid train alerts on. So, uh, if, if anybody can, Gremlin Lucy, thank you so much, Gremlin Lucy. I appreciate you for stepping in for uh, for modding for today. Uh, I'm super excited, and if you didn't know, you probably don't know, because uh, Gremlin is our temporary mod just for today for the hype train, and uh, I start a little early so we could get an interview in, and then we can play some music for the last two hours, so Gremlin Lucy, you're so awesome, thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Dude, Ray, this, co this album cover is amazing, hold on, let me pull this up, hold on, we'll, we'll show yeah, everybody. Man. Uh, where did you get the name of this album? Because it's pretty amazing. That's a cool story, man. My uh, producer, shout out to Logic Johnson, uh, out in Vegas, the one that uh, he produced the album and I co-produced it. Yeah, you and, did uh, some songs yourself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, together, collab with him. You well, know, I mean, he, like he, he he did most of it sonically, the music. Oh, okay, know? okay, okay. But um, so I'm calling him. Uh, back and forth during the final mixing stages mm. and uh you know we re we recorded this in 21 days around the same time last year you know oh, so, okay um, oh so this is this has been something that's kind of been done for a while yeah huh? okay. you remember the last interview i was talking about yes you know, this next one another album out. so this that's is right. it yeah, this, this is it this is it so so we were we were on the phone and um uh, we were playing with some titles last year and none of them really stuck you know how it's like you know when it's that. That's right. What it it, is, it, you know? As soon as it is, as soon as it's. Oh want. my gosh. Sorry. Right. Oh, you good. And then, so um, I was just joking at first. Yeah. And I, you know, because we were talking about how the stigma uh, of uh, older cats rapping mm -hmm. and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, well, you know, my name, I'm Uncle Ray. So <laughs> that's, that's, I was like. Yeah, that's, uh, that's <laughs> a lot like, of your so, album. Please, I'm sorry. I'm right, interrupting. Right, right. I'm oh, you good. You good. So I'm like, um, so so what I just jokingly said, I should call it somebody could get their uncle, you know, and we crack it up. And so he was like, wait a minute. And then we both at the same time, like, no, nah, that's kind of dope, you know, and then we start <laughs> laughing about the little clips that we should put in it and, and the image and everything, and it just boom, just oh, okay. just like that. Okay, I'm so just, that, that's I'm how show, the name came about. I'm gonna show you guys uh the <laughs> Uh, let's bring Ray in. This is the album cover. <laughs> Let me bring Ray into this too. So, oh wait. That's... Oh, by the way, I just want to. I'm tired of people thinking that that's me on the album cover. Is, for is real, that that's really not me. I just want to put the. Yeah. Is that Spice? <laughs> put... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. He's like, that's not me. Like, yeah, you. people like, hey man, when you take that picture. <laughs> that ain't me, man. That's not. <laughs> Come on. And like, and he's even got the sandals with the socks on. I love it. The whole thing. Dude, the whole thing. I love right. Spice Adams. I think that dude oh, is so too. funny. That dude is Hilarious. so funny. Uh, what? Where he's did that amazing. dude even come from? Like, I don't even know where he's from. Is I he, think he's he was a. a uh, he's an ex. He was an NFL player at some uh, point. I believe. Okay. Okay. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't even know. You but... know, he had to have. You know, he had to have his team cracking up all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For real, yeah. like it's yeah. just this whole idea of like having the pants up really high, and it's yeah. just there's yep. something so nerdy and so just not cool, and, right. and he and he does that so well. And you know, in like in real life, he's probably a really cool dude, right? Like he's probably oh, no, a real no. cool oh, dude, no. and yeah. he's just walking around like that. I love it. I love it when people put themselves out there like that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, mm -hmm. there's the album cover, everybody. Uh, the link tree is in the chat, so if you guys are interested, go click on that link tree. There's all kinds of cool stuff for you guys to get into there. Uh, but, but, dude, like, you know, like, listening through, and by the way, thank you thank you I, I, for throwing on some of the podcasts on it. That that was awesome. I was like... Oh, you peeped that I thought, too, yeah. I thought, I was... <laughs> dude, I thought something was playing in the background. I was like, what? What's... Why am I... Why do I Where's hear myself? <laughs> I'm like, oh God, why am I, why do I hear me? Ew. And like, 
And then I realized that you put in some of it from our last conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, yeah. you know, you know, I, I love talking about me. So what what made you put me <laughs> in that in that particular thing, especially because it's about us talking to your cousin, who is like one of the founding members of Motown, and right, uh, right. and and uh, you know, she's she's old school to say the least, and mm-hmm. uh, and she was kind of making a little comment on hip-hop but what what made you decide to put that in it just fits so perfectly mm-hmm. because you know these last two albums if really that's kind of like one piece setting i mean splitting two mm-hmm. 21 days and, and uh somebody come get their uncle and we've had behind the scenes we've had plenty of discussions about you know how to how to uh you know push this or how to present it and everything so um I just wanted to engulf as much of that experience, you know, of, of putting this together as, you know, in, in the project itself. And yeah. I, that was, uh, you know, that was one of the moments, you know, that, that I felt that fit perfectly, you know, yeah. into this to, to just, you know, just a little snippet of, yeah. well, it ain't no, just no snippet. It's all real life. You know, I get real personal in my, in my music. So yeah. it's all, you know, inspired by true, stuff there's layers to it you know so and uh, on the other thing i want to say is as far as the the imagery with the um you know the cover and everything and the skits in between yeah. you know that's the that's the comedy aspect of it mm. and when you listen to the album it's nothing it's nothing funny about the content at all right. it's not sad or anything but right. you know I'm, I'm pretty serious with what yeah. i'm saying but um, and that's that theater. What's that mask? Uh, oh, the smiling mask. Yeah, you know, the Tra- tragedy comedy. And comedy. And tra- yep, yep. You're right, right. So that I wanted to kind of bring that aspect to the whole presentation right. as well. You well, know, I wanted people to be laughing, and plus, people who ain't hip to me, I'm sure they'll see that album cover, and he, even if they don't like my genre of music, they gotta be like, "What does this sound like? like what, <laughs> right. Who is this?" You know what I mean? I gotta see what this sounds like. So, <laughs> why do I need? Why do I need to get? Why do I need to get my uncle? Why? Right, right. Why, Ray? Why? Let's look at that cover right. again, just for fun. Mm-hmm. Look at that! Boom! Right. Look at that! Go get that! Go get that! Because all, right. all my nephews keep telling me I'm I'm too old to rap, so you know I I won't sit down. You know what I mean? So it's like, hey, somebody come get their uncle. He's still out here rapping. He's still trying. <laughs> He's still doing it. I I think mm-hmm. that the I I love that aspect that of what you brought in because you are talking about some serious stuff because I feel like the album is sort of almost like a transitional album of like transitioning your life like it feels like you're 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 declaring some kind of transition into another uh, 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 another phase of your life is, is that right Absolutely mm-hmm. I love I love that you got that because I didn't I mean that's just the truth of that's the reality of what's happening with me Mm -hmm. right now, you know, and the music is just, I just make what's, you know, there's no plan. I just, you know, I go through music, whatever comes out, it just comes together. Mm -hmm. But I guess I I express that well in that song because that's exactly what's going on with me now. Very big transition, you know, and it's been going on um, for some years now, I'd say a good five, you know, and this is, um, this is the, the other side of of some turmoil you know i'm seeing the beginning of you know because any significant shifts or or changes in life you know it, it don't come easy no, you know so i've been I've, I've paid my dues and i've gone through a lot of hardships and i'm finally seeing you know some uh some reasoning behind it and, mm-hmm. and you know and it seems like you know some things that needed to be taken away from me that was preventing me from reaching where i wanted to go have been, you know, I was still trying to hold on to it, mm-hmm. but you know, yeah. finally, just you know, like my job, my career, you know, yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm finally where I, I think I need to be. I believe I need to be mm-hmm. to get where I, I want to go. You know, what? So, so yeah. in the last five years, you know, I mean, you can go into it as much as you want, but like in the last five years, what, what was it that's been holding you back? Um. I was a railroader for 15 years. That lifestyle sucked. I think we touched on that a little bit before. We did. We did. Um, I was definitely not meant to be a railroader. Some people love it. Mm. It, it pays well. It was a blessing. I was able to uh, provide for my family pretty good with that. Yeah. Um, and uh, certain relationships, 
you know, that I had. I lost my mom. Uh, my wife was battling cancer. It was just a whole bunch of stuff going on, man. And, it, and all of these songs are like the soundtrack to all that stuff wow. going yeah. on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But I see, I see uh, here I am, man. Yeah, you you're know? still standing and you're still releasing and you're still going and, and pursuing your your dreams and passions. And I think that's beautiful. Um, there, There's something about the, you know, if you're not laughing, you're crying type of thing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I like mm -hmm. that you brought that that comedy tragedy aspect to um, right. to 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 the album. And, and you know, like uh, because it's like some things just in life are, are so sad, so absurd that that you're 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 either gonna laugh at it or you're gonna cry and like i'd rather you know sometimes you gotta cry but i can't live my life in tears you know what i mean like right, right yeah. so there has to be and there's a difference between laughing at something and like laughing about like just you know like like laughing at um i don't know i can't even think of a good example like laughing at something because you aren't connected to it and you're not like 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 making fun of people in a really bad mm -hmm. way, you know, like laughing, mm -hmm. you know, like there's a difference between that laughing at or laughing with. Right. Is and that what and you're saying? kind yeah. of kind of. But like there's also like this idea that, you know, you can't just laugh your problems away, kind of, because some people right, it's yeah, almost like, hit them, yeah. well, it's kind of like a defense mechanism for some people, you know, and for me, especially like I'll find myself laughing and some people will be like, what, why are you laughing? And I'm just like, I don't know. Cause I'm uncomfortable, you know, like, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah I do that too. Cause I mean, most people that know me, um, well, I wouldn't say that, but, um, uh, you know, at work and everywhere I go, you know, the band I was in, I mean, and, um, you know, most people would say I'm always cracking jokes. Mm. I'm always laughing. I don't like the even and when I'm in, I could be in my darkest time. You'd have no clue, yeah. you know, because, you know, I, I don't like to spread negative feelings. You know mm. what I mean? Like I know me, I, um, you know, when the people close to me, the people I love, when they feel sadness, when they feel pain, they don't even without them saying anything, I feel that too, mm. you know? So when I'm feeling pain, I don't want to spread it. So I just be like, it's a defense mechanism. I just act like ain't nothing wrong, yeah. you know? And well, it comes out in my music. So, <laughs> but you know, the right. Right. Stuff. I mean, you have an but, outlet uh, for it, but, mm -hmm. but, but I think, I guess, I guess my point was that when we're laughing at things because of, you know, we're uncomfortable with it, maybe, uh, maybe there's more to it. I don't know. Maybe there's more to it than just, you know, an uncomfortable laughter. I, I, I don't even know where I'm kind of going with this. It's just, yeah. there, it, it, it's just, it's just it's an odd thing. It's an odd reaction that some people have. Um, mm -hmm. I'm known for laughing at shit that shouldn't be funny. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, me too. <laughs> me too. Me too. I laugh at bad, horrible jokes. I do. Right. I, I, I do. Right. It, like, I shouldn't be laughing at this. <laughs> but it'd be funny, man. You can't help it. You know, you can't help it. It should be funny. I think levity you know, is is the the situation. I think that's what's great about a good comedian or a good joke is that you can bring levity to a very serious situation and kind absolutely. of uh and, and kind of show light on it in, in a different perspective that you might not have ever seen before. And when you're laughing right. about something that's very serious and awful that most people be like that's just terrible, you know, like the comedian who's doing it has to be very very talented and very skilled to tread those kind of waters. I'm finding that yeah. I'm finding that issue just being a, a interviewer, man. Like I, there's right. we're getting to a point now where people are so sensitive, and you know I'm not I'm not taking away I know from what you people's mean. I know feelings exactly or anything. Yeah, yeah, but like, exactly. Yeah. The the well, you got you got to tiptoe. You got to. I'm like, tiptoeing. Really I'm tiptoeing. Yeah. So like and, and like that ain't no way to live, man. That is no way to live. You know how do we get to that? I don't know. You know and as artists, it's crazy because we're artists. We're we're supposed to express and and like disseminate and discern the things around us and and turn it into art. You know, and this right. is one of my art artistic expressions is interviewing people and talking to people. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it's it's interesting that artists are not allowed to express themselves to the fullest. You know what I mean? Like, well, you, you are. Mm. You know, like for for instance, me, I'm not tied to any label. I'm independent, mm -hmm. so at this point, I can say whatever the hell I want to say, <laughs> and like, I, I I plan on continuing that. You know, yeah, <laughs> from hey, this point on, dude, you know, sure. because that's that's what it's all about, man. You can't you can't. I mean, 
it can be done, but you know, you, you nobody should let anybody uh, control their creativity or or suppress. Mm. You know, when it comes to creating stuff, nobody. You know, you should be free to, especially in this in art. I mean, look out throughout history. You know, that was our the one thing that nobody could shut up. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like even if when they tried to, even when they were persecuted for their art, you know, they would find little ways to. Y'all do it, you know, put that message out cryptically, you yeah. know, in the paintings and, yeah. you know, and, and lyrics and stuff like that. So, you know, ain't nothing new under the sun. So, uh, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to keep on talking my shit. I think, <laughs> you know? No, and, and me too. But I think I think just for me personally, I think I just need to figure out a better way of doing it. I I ran into some problems, mm-hmm. uh, not problems. I, I had a really good learning moment a couple of weeks ago with a guest. Um her name is Lyrical Genius, and she's like so talented. And just, and she's blowing up right now. She just got a deal with Nike. She got like TikTok. Oh, sweet. It was TikTok. I man. think I think I seen a clip of that. I think I seen a clip. You probably you, saw, could yeah, you yeah. elaborate on it though? Yeah. Could you? I I don't even know why I'm bringing this back up. Raina was like, you should just stay away from these subjects. And I'm just like, <laughs> but how do we solve things if we just keep? Not you gotta have a dialogue. Things. You gotta have a dialogue. You know what? You know and what here's mean? the thing: I went at it in a bad way. You know, like it. Uh-huh. You know, like I, I could have went in a better way where I had her, like you know, because because I want people to talk about their experience in life on the show. Mm-hmm. As artists, mm-hmm. we're taking our experience and and putting it into music and art and stuff. So. I think that that's a, a big part of it. So I, I don't know. I went around it the wrong way and, and things got into, you know, BLM and George Floyd. Mm-hmm. And, and I was saying just those some hot, hot topics. They're touchy topics. Very topi- get... Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and yeah. her song is a very militant song about black mm-hmm. and being black, a black woman. And, and like, I love mm-hmm. it. I, I, f- I fucking love the song. I respect her so much as an artist and it, and it bums me out that I, I that, I might have offended her. And she actually said she was offended, which was horrible. But the learning yeah. moment was, the, which is the biggest and most important thing about this conversation was, is like, she was telling me how that, you know, bringing up the fact that George Floyd, you know, was a criminal and mm-hmm. bringing up things like black on black crime, even though I didn't mm-hmm. bring that up, the chat did. But mm-hmm. but like bringing these things up and trying to bring them into a conversation. That's deflection. That's deflection. There you, you go. You know what I mean? You're taking away so, from the actual right. moment. And you're in your in your in your allowing to perpetuate this negative connotation that was uh put on brown folks, black and brown folks for the last, you know, forever. You know, for mm-hmm. and, and sort of and, and you know, it, it took some like it, she explained it to me, which you know, it's not her job to explain this shit to me. And it, mm-hmm. you know, so I I was very thankful that she was like, "Yo, you gotta you gotta look at it like this." And it got heated, but by the end, we were able to sort of laugh and and uh, you know, right. and thank each other. I think, but I think what we we need to do as far as when we open dialogue, mm-hmm. uh, that dialogue with stuff like that, I think we all need to focus on each other's intentions. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, a lot gets lost in translation or miscommunicated um, just uh, out of ignorance on each, whoever's side. You know what I mean? Just not not with a negative connotation to it, but just not knowing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you know, I'm ignorant of so many other cultures. Like my wife, um, when I met her, I thought she was Mexican. You know, mm-hmm. I thought everybody that looked Latino was Mexican <laughs> right, with my, right. you know, my limited, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Like, I'm like, Belize, where is Belize? I thought, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But, but when we can look at each other's intentions first, then we can get past uh, something. We can let them walls down and, and not be so quick to be offended. Mm. You know what I mean? And not to, not to minimize anybody's... Uh, you know, when they're fit, you know, everybody got a right to be offended for whatever, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, I, I've learned this in myself because I used, it's real easy to um, be on a defense, especially, you know, being a black man in America and the different, the higher paying jobs that I had, the, the less of people that look like me. And um, there's a lot of microaggression. There's a lot. It's just obvious that mm-hmm. things are different for us. And there's different challenges for us that, um, you know, my white counterparts were oblivious to. It's like, how how would they know if I didn't explain to them? They're like, what? And then 
you know, some of them I've even pointed out situations and they like, man, I never would have, yeah. I would never would have known that if you would tell me, you know, mm-hmm. but um, that's how I learned, you know, you got to look at people's intention. Yeah. You know, you got to feel, you got to discern where they're coming from. And then you can maybe look back that. And like you said, it could be a, a teaching moment. It it could be, a, you know, we can, we can build past that. It, it was a huge teaching you know? moment. And, 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 you know, like, I, I got I, there was so many things I could have did differently in, in retrospect you know obviously there were so many different things and, and like I have no problem and like I, I'm half Mexican but like mm-hmm. I'm white I'm white you know mm-hmm. like there's no yeah. no one's yeah. gonna be like that guy is Mexican you know well, like, it, well it, it depends it depends be, it depends because you can be you know say um at a uh all white event or whatever and you mexican there yep, you know? yeah <laughs> you stick out there so yeah You're right You're no mexican. no no and and you know not to say that i haven't had those experiences because you know like kids when i went to grade school if someone saw my mom drop me off and she's like this short little mexican lady things change really quickly you know and i went to some little piece of shit ohio like in the middle of nowhere ohio school so like it, it was in the country and Anyways, you know, like, th- but, but there's no way. And like, I think one of those things is like acknowledging that and like, I, I don't know, acknowledging that even in the conversation, even it, it, like just being like, look, I, I'm white. I know I'm white. Like, fuck, I, I, I recognize that there's a privilege to this shit. And, right, right. You, but, but I'm trying to learn, you know, and I'm trying to right, understand. First of all, first of all, you know, we all know that it's, you know, it's a social construct anyway. Yeah. But we've all, we've made it a reality. You know, race ain't, it, it wasn't real, but we have the power to make shit real. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? Because if you ask me, money ain't real, but it's real as hell now. You know, but we, we make it real. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, our and, belief and we, in we're, it. We're, yeah. we're, we're born into this indoctrination. You know, we didn't, you know, we didn't choose that. We just kind of, you know, race, a race was a thing since I can remember. You know, I grew up uh, at the my early childhood you know, the schools I went to it was predominantly black. And, you know, you might have uh, one white person, a couple white people in the class, you know. And then uh, at sixth grade, we moved and I was the only black dude in my class. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was very, talk about culture shock. You know, I could tell stories about the different things, different environments I've been in that were rough for me, rough for me as a kid. Mm. But I, I'm thankful for that now because that's I wouldn't have the perspective and I, and I can understand how people could be uh, racist or whatever. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I wouldn't have had that perspective, that wide perspective to be able to see mm-hmm. past that, you know, and I might have I might have if I would have stayed in my little uh, what do you call it, echo chamber or whatever, I probably would have grew up racist myself, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, <laughs> so I yeah. mean, because it's there. It's I mean, we're kind of all taught to be racist anyway. Yeah. You know, not not directly, but indirectly, yeah. you know, uh, whether it's through uh, the educational system, your home, you know, it's real subtle. It's the, mm-hmm. our entertainment, you know, the different things we watch growing up, you know, it was normalized. It wasn't a, it wasn't even a moral issue. It was just it was part of life, you know. So uh, and I think we need to stop trying to, you know, we need to talk about the elephant in the room. We're trying to everybody's uncomfortable about. Uh, talking about race we need to dead that you know we need to get comfortable about talking about this shit that's been going on for decades and yeah. centuries and that's gonna keep going on if we can't talk about it comfortably yeah. you know and, and let's and that's you know sometimes it don't have to be comfortable you know long as it's civil long as each side is is open to listening right. and um and another thing another problem is like you know no white person could tell a black person, how they should live or feel about their experience. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So that primarily, I think more people need to be just, that's just that simple. Mm-hmm. Just don't, don't, don't say, Hey, you know, like when a black person says, Hey, this is my experience. This is, you know, my struggle. This is my plight. And the response is, no, it ain't. Get over it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Which, we which, can't even get past that. Right. You know? And, and, so, and you know, in a way, that's how she probably felt when I'm, like, sitting yeah. there giving these, you know, these rebuttals, whether they came from chat or they came from my silly little head. You know, like, she's right, like, right. why are you, you know, why are you minimalizing, you know, my, our experience because you have these 
you know, these things. Is diversity taught in American schools? It's actually starting to be. Um, hi, Raina. Yeah, Welcome yeah. in. Uh, it's starting and, to and, be. And I see you, Gremlin Lucy. Shout, shout out to Gremlin Lucy in the chat. We, you know, we covered diversity, and I, hey, and prejudice, equality in literally every lesson of school of the school day. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, right on. Hey, yeah, teachers need to be paid more. More, by the way. I agree with that. <laughs> as much I as doctors, you know. I, dude, yeah. I agree. But with not that. to cut you off. I, I no, just no, no, no. Please, that up. please cut me off. God, like this is how. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I get in trouble, man. Dude, and, and then I, cool, I put man. I put something on Twitter, and people came for me on Twitter. Dude, I have just been no man, hey, listen, I shit. Can tell and you, you know I, what? I can tell you feel bad about it. Let, hey, let that let it go, man. Like God. I said, your intentions. I, as long as I've known you, well, it's been a couple of years now. Yep. You know, I mean, through since that last the casino thing, right? And I understand everybody ain't the same, but um, I'm a vibe oriented person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know and uh, I know your intentions are pure. I, mean, I know you meant nothing by, but and we can do that, you know. And then, you know, you've already spoken your piece. You've you've apologized. You, you've you've made amends to your mistake. You first admitted your mistake. Most people won't even do that. Yeah. But what you shouldn't do is beat yourself up over. You should move yes. on. It was a learning experience, and you should move on. And don't 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 hold that no more. You don't owe nobody nothing. You. You, your intentions wasn't to be offensive, and, and you recognize that it was, and you made amends. So let's go on to the next. You know, <laughs> you know, you can't, the you next can't hold on to that. People, you but... can't hold on to that, man. Yeah. You no, I, I feel you. That, I feel you so much. Yep. It's just like, like I said, I, I've been feeling terrible, and if 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 mm. LG is out there and is feeling as terrible as I am about it, like to uh, me, that's the worst part. Is like it's that, mm -hmm. like because I'm the one who made the mistake. This person came on, and she and she wanted to come on my show too, and so it was mm -hmm. like it was a really like I feel more terrible that she came on the show and had to, you know, go through my ignorant bullshit and and yeah. then, <laughs> and, and you know have to go on with her day because. She's a busy woman, you know. She has she, right. she has a Nike deal to contend with, you know what I'm saying? So like, right, right. she didn't need yeah. this. She don't need me. Yeah. She don't need my numbers. Her her new uh, her new video is doing great. Like she has six mm -hmm. million you know plays worldwide. So right. like she and, don't. And you pissed her off. You, and you I had to come in. Pissed her off. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel terrible because like she because she shouldn't be focused on that. She should be focused on her art and like. And that's the that's the biggest crime there is like taking away her focus from spreading her message and spreading her music. I just I right. feel like it's it, it's not what the show is about. And so speaking of music, man, let's get back to this. Uh, let's get back to somebody come get the elk. <laughs> yeah, should we look at the cover again? Let's look at this cover yeah. again. Boom. Now let, let, me, let me ask you this: Have, what 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 sticks out uh, sonically the most to you so far? I think it's the boom bat. The the boom bat. The boom bat. That's just okay. it hits it hits me in a it hits me in my nineties hip hop heart. Uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh but but I really love I really love that line that you said, um, where it's like the funk I think it's off Midwest Funk where you're like the funk was is from Ohio, just ask Dr. Dre. Uh -huh. I know I'm yeah, shitting on that yeah, lyric, but yeah. Yeah, but that <laughs> I good. love that. I love that. It's like it's Zap and Roger, right? Like you're you, yeah, that's what Zap you're referring and Roger, to. Yeah. Um, uh, Ohio players, Ohio Uchi Collins, yeah. uh, Heat Wave even got Ohio ties. Um, it just go. Um, I White forgot Bootsy's from but, Cincy. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Ohio. I mean, um, J James Brown. Some of the people in James Brown. Mm -hmm. One of his drummers was from Toledo, as a matter of oh, fact. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, we got really. You know, I, I mentioned this before. Like the when the hip hop went to the West Coast, you know what was uh, called West Coast rap. That was really Midwest music because yep, ninety percent right. of what was sampled, you know, when NWA and that whole wave afterwards, they were rapping to Ohio music. You know, you know, you know, you're a musician, so you know, and you've traveled, so you know, there's difference in geographic sound. You mm -hmm. know, Southern sounds like Southern, West sounds like West, mm -hmm. East sounds, in any genre, you can just you can tell, you know, where the stuff's from. Yeah. But we don't get the credit that we deserve. You know, Ohio was the home of the funk, like I said. So I wanted to, um, you know, I wanted to touch on that with that song. And um, the boom bat, I just wanted to get back to the roots because, you know, everybody know hip hop started in the East. 
You know, so I wanted yeah. to bring, yeah, I wanted to, you know, bring that that vibe back. Hell yeah. Um, let me see. Okay, then uh, making it funky. That was just that was just fun, and I wanted to uh, put some little Toledo history out there. You know, I, I was name dropping a lot of names that people may not know that were intricate and in even creating the hip hop scene in Toledo. Nice. Um, so I wanted, you know, I wanted to get them day flowers and some of them probably ain't even heard it yet, you yeah. know, or probably some of them probably didn't even know that I was hip to, you know, what they've done. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, what's after that? Um, uh, proceed. That's a very deep, um, you know, I was writing my pain on that one, you know, um, you know, when you feel like you just ain't got nothing left in the tank, you know, when you feel like you just, you just got beat down too much, it's like, keep going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, uh, and, uh, you can come back from that. That one, uh, I wrote that to reach out to people who suffer from mental illness from, of any kind, mm -hmm. you know, cause you know, I battle with depression and, um, you know, I know times where even though it's false, but it could feel like, you know, like the only alternative is to just be gone. You know what I mean? To end your life. And, yeah. and like in that moment, that feels so real. Like, you, you know, and, you know, since I've gotten past that and I've gone, you know, got no struggles and I know people who haven't made it through that struggle. Um, I just wanted to be that voice. You know, I wanted to save some lives and people that, you know, you know, who struggle with that and, and they don't know, they don't have an outlet and they don't know how to express themselves and people don't understand, yeah. you know, because, you know, you hear people a lot of time, man, like, oh, you know, I can, how could anybody think about, well, people do, you know, you don't, you don't ever know what people's struggle is, you know, so I wanted to, you know, put that out there to let, you know, as many people with their earshot that struggle with that know that they ain't alone and if they keep pushing through, they can get past anything. You know, so and then um, uh, it, that um, and the, Vatila Vatila Fields. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. It, oh yes, Vatila Fields. Shout out to Vatila Fields. Yeah, she's uh, she's singing angelic right. voice on there. Ain't she? yeah. She's all through the album. You know, yeah. she's in. She's in all through the album. She was on Twenty One Days as well. Mm, okay. You know okay. the the uh, the her vocals on Twenty One. Where's Days. she from? Is she? Oh, she's from Toledo. Is she? Was she in the band with you? Was that no, Vatila? no, who, no. Who is in the band? Who? What was her name? There's, uh, there's like a couple. You people. got, yeah. There's quite a few. There's some new ones in the band too. Mm -hmm. Um, um, you got Madam Shear, mm -hmm. Emily Kaufman. That's ah, she's a beautiful voice. Uh, we that. have a new member. Her name is Jewel. She's from Detroit. And uh, we got Sarah Gran Granada. Mm -hmm. Yep, those are, are the girls are you gonna, singing the band. Are you gonna try? Uh, are you gonna like? I mean, because you recently moved uh, across the country, right? You moved to New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey. So are yep. you? Are I'm you? A, are you gonna? Are you gonna be still like sitting in with these guys when you come into town, or is it just you left? When I well, I left. Uh, you know, everyday people. It's a brand as well. Mm. You know what I mean? That's always gonna be my musically musical family, whether they like it or not. You know, but, but um, they're they're still gigging. As a matter of fact, I think they might have something today. But um, I'm I'm always gonna um, try to incorporate them whenever I can. You know, yeah. so um, so that ain't over. That's still a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, shout out to everyday people for yeah. one night. Yeah, they're, they're yep. Awesome. And I was trying to get the um the girls in the band to participate in my projects mm -hmm. too, but they. They hard headed, you know. They <laughs> they got their own plans. Uh, they got their own plans. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, you know. Hopefully, if they listen, you know, y'all gonna be on the next stuff. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be, out. you know. Watch out. So, so but then, yeah, Fatila killed it though. Yeah, Fatila, oh sure. man, that voice, you know. And you and can... then shout out to shout out to Swell Gates. Swell uh, Gates. He 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 uh, featured on Type of Group, mm. and that was just um. You know, I I started putting a little, you know, I mean, it's just your every day getting off of work. My feet hurt. I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. And and it got it through some little. No, nah, I wouldn't say conspiracy theory, but just some jewels on how, you know, they're. I mean, how things are set up for us, kind of not to not to succeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, but mm -hmm. then, 
And, you know, but the thing is just like, I wanted a not too heavy and just kind of like, fuck it. Let's have a good time. You know what I mean? Let's party to it, you know? And, yeah. um, you know, Swell Gates is the, is the, is featured on that one. That's a good friend of mine. We went to high school together oh, nice. and, you know, we've, we've, you know, been around the same music family for over two decades, nice. you know, and then, and then my, uh, <clears throat> my brother Black Sun featured or MCing. That's the last record I wanted to bring back the um, kind of like the well, not like the boom. But I wanted to bring back the the sounds from the roots, like Run DMC, mm. uh, Rappers Delight. I wanted that oh, yeah. that energy, the back and forth when we, you know, that yes, yes, y'all, yeah, you don't, yeah. you know, what I'm saying, you don't you know, stop. I wanted to bring yeah. that element. Yeah, I wanted to bring that element to it. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, and my and my man Black Sun came through with the feature on that too. So yeah, and that's that's pretty much the whole album. And mm. I noticed. You know, people's attention span is so short nowadays. I heard, I heard that that line in there too. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, so that, yeah. so I, they're, they're to me actually these are two EPs to my standards from back in the day. Yeah, you know, but but nowadays it's a whole album. I'm, I'm, you know, songs are getting shorter. I was tripping <laughs> when songs started to be. Uh, Three and a half minutes. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Now they're they're shorter than that. You know. Now there's <laughs> two you know minutes, two you know two minutes, two baby. verses. Yeah, <laughs> keep it short. My, I was I was joking, but I hey, I was joking with this this last uh, title, but uh, I might do it. I was I was like, you know, I'm gonna make it. My next album is just gonna be all hooks. I'm gonna have no verses. <laughs> <laughs> all hooks, baby. Nobody's all getting hooks. bored. Nobody's getting right. Right. No it's skips. Like, That'll ruin the game. What if that catch on though? You it's know, everybody, no more songs. Everybody just gonna be writing chords. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be so amazing. Now they're under two minutes. Got to get those replay numbers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah. That's a good point. But Bonnie. see that. Oh shit. But okay, so do you create music to fit those parameters, or do you, you get what I'm saying? Like as an I, artist, uh, no, I, I, I can't. I don't want to stay in them boxes. Like, yeah, you know. But that's that's a point though. That's how it that if you really want to be successful, if you really want to make some noise and you want to do some numbers, you have to follow those parameters. But it's, it's so cool. frustrating it is. as an artist to to create I don't create for for I don't create a song thinking, okay, I gotta catch everybody in the first 30 seconds so it counts <laughs> as a stream. Right. Your music gonna sound like that. You know what I mean? Right. If you make a song. You know, if you make a song to fit that shit, it's, to me, it's going to sound like it. And I don't want my music to sound like that. Yeah. You sure. know? Uh, but hey. You know, yeah, man. <laughs> doing this, Wild But Sober. I'm doing this. Um, so Wild But Sober is here, and he wants to know, uh, waffles or pretzels? And I do have to give you the, the, the rundown. Pretzel, not the not the little cracker-ass, little shit-hard pretzels. I'm talking about nice... The big, big one where you can dip the cheese in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretzels, yeah. We, we've been through this before. You know what? We've I got through this before. I, I understand, yeah. but Wild and Sober is here, and he asked, and, okay. and, and I'm just asking again. Because you don't know. Maybe things change. You moved, yeah. to, you moved right, to New right. Jersey, oh, no, bro. What if you moved to I New want, Jersey still... and became a waffle eater? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that might be your shit. I, I, want, I don't know. I I want the pretzel, man. I want the pretzel <laughs> with the salt on it, and and you gotta be warm yeah. and fresh, and and with the nacho cheese, <laughs> yes, with, the, with yeah. the jalapeno at the bottom yeah. of the nacho cheese. That's what I'm. Whew. That's what I want. Killing it. Oh, Kill by the way, by the way, I love it out here in Jersey, man. Yeah, why? There's bears I love out, it out here. It's it's first of all, it's it's, it's new. You mm. know what I mean? It's yeah. it's 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 new. It's a new area. There's a lot more going on around here. I'm like. 15 minutes away from New York City. Oh, nice. Um, nice. You know, and it's it's just, it's a lot more. People are actually friendlier here. Wow. You know, I don't That's... live like in the, in the city. You know, it's like, it's a suburb. But um, like, I, I, it reminds me where I'm from down south. Like, you mm -hmm. can't walk past nobody without them waving or speaking. Yeah. And everybody's polite. Only, only thing different is they drive like, Wild animals assholes. out here, though. Assholes. <laughs> Other than assholes, that, dude. It's all assholes. cool. Yeah. Jersey driver. No, cool. we we went. We were in Clifton, New Jersey. Is it Clifton or is it Camden? Camden, New Jersey. Camden. We were in Camden. I think that's right. I heard that's pretty. I heard Camden was pretty, 
pretty rough, though. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's definitely rough for three teenagers mm. just going on a fun little <laughs> ride through Camden. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, 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 they they don't care. They, like... Like yeah. they'll just like run red lights at the turn, oh, yeah. and they'll see you coming, and they'll just I don't care, and they they, yeah. they won't yeah. they won't eat, they'll just go. They just no, I'm going. Yeah. And, and that's just the norm. That's, that's just how it goes. Yeah, that's yeah. Just, if you ain't doing yeah. it, then you're holding up traffic, and now you're right, the enemy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you had plenty of time <laughs> to cut that motherfucker off. You know what right. I mean? Right. <laughs> exactly. It, 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 I saw it, I saw it, the Statue of Liberty for the first time. Oh, nice. I saw. Um, Times Square for the first Dude, time. Dude, I'm going to be out I'm going to be yeah. out in New York City um in uh in October. We should link up. If you can. Absolutely. If you can. Absolutely. Have lunch yeah, or something in the here. city. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, my nephew was cracking me. I had to get all of the um the tourist things out of, you know what I mean? Cuz as yeah. soon as we got downtown, I got the phone out up to, you know, what I mean? I'm doing all this <laughs> stuff. And uh before my nephew could see even say anything. I was like, yeah, I got I had to get that out of my system, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Seeing Times Square for the first time, yeah, I went yeah. live, so I got the, you, got you know, to. I got the phone on. <laughs> you know? I was like, okay, I had. To. Oh, and then we, he took me to the studio, and I met uh, Fab, you know, Fabulous. Oh, wow! And uh, and so we're walking out of the studio, and uh, two people come in, a, a dude and, and a, a woman, and uh, my nephew's like. Uh, <clears throat> dapping him up and say, hey, how you doing? Molly walked out and I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm Uncle Ray. I dap dude up. And uh, as I'm walking out, I'm like, dude look familiar. I'm thinking, do I know him from like Toledo or something? Like, you know, <laughs> Did I before work with I him could at the say anything, yeah, yeah, before I could say anything, I was just wondering why he looked familiar. Yeah. And um, and uh, my, my nephew was like, oh, that's Stilo Brim. And I'm like, who's that? And he was like, the dude from Ridiculousness. You know what I mean? So in in New York for like 10, 15 minutes, I get out the car. Uh, biker boys are, are going up and down uh, uh, Times Square. A cop tried to run one of them over. Um, somebody tried to sell me some weed. You know what I mean? <laughs> I go to the New York is back. I mean, fabulous. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I go past, I go past the ridiculous this dude that didn't even know who he was. You know, and one of my homies told me, he said, "There's a reason why they call it a New York Minute." You know what I'm saying? And now I fully understand yeah. what that New York Minute means because yeah. it's just, you know, New York Minute is what is like happens. a Toledo day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Toledo month, son. Yeah. It's like, come on, man. Oh my God, dude! That yeah, dude. New York is intense. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely, Uncle Ray, mm -hmm. man. I I appreciate you coming back on the show. I appreciate this new album. Everybody needs to go check out Uncle Ray. Please new do. new Thank album. You, new. Uh, oh, that's on the wrong thing. But we we. <laughs> I love this one right here. The da boom bap. Let's just listen to a little bat. bit before we let you go, if if we can. I don't yeah. I don't know if it's gonna let us. Oh, okay. Well. I guess Spotify doesn't love us anymore. <laughs> anyway, oh wait, right. let's see if this one works. There you go. There, there it is. is yes, this is available now, everybody. Go and get yourself some Uncle Ray. Lost my focus, but now I got it back. Currently picking up the pieces, but there at least I'm on track in line with my purpose. You have better prepared. I love your cadence, still, man. Sometimes I still get nervous Thanks. when I think of what that entails. From the on-walk path to the beat and uh, well, everybody, make sure you go out, check out the album. Make sure you click on the Uncle Li Uncle Ray link tree and go out and listen to some Uncle Ray. Somebody get they uncle out now. Go get it. Go get it. Thanks for having me. Again, of course. Of course. Here, let me turn this down a little. Uncle Ray, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I really do appreciate you coming back on and uh We'll be in touch again. I'm sure you'll be back on. Thank you for for you know Absolutely. coming on and chatting it up with me. I, I I could go all day with you. We we always have great conversations. So same uh, here, man. I um, love it. it. It don't even seem like you know. It don't seem like work. It's just fun. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like fun, man. Next thing you know, uh, hour goes by and 
for like five minutes, man. That's how I felt, man. I looked at the time. You're like, let's get back to the album. I was like, oh my god, we're almost done. Yeah. Like, I've been sitting here. I'm sitting here telling you my like my sins of of my racist That's sins. So cool. That's, so cool. That's what I like about this is just laid back, you know, unscripted, yeah. just real deal. That's why I came to you. Like, hey, I, I love this, man. I love this platform, and I appreciate you for what you're doing, man. Can can you I know? can I use that as a as a bumper? Can I use that as a stinger? Like <laughs> Uncle Ray's <laughs> approval. <laughs> All right, yeah, Uncle Ray. All right, guys. Uh, we're gonna let Uncle Ray go, and then me and Raina are gonna come back, and we are gonna play two hours of music. It's gonna be a fundraiser for Mary Ann or Emster Life. If anybody knows her, she's a huge supporter in the Twitch community. So we will be RB with Raina Mystique and some music, and. And we'll be getting raided here soon. So I'm going to turn over the studio. Uncle Ray, have a great day out there in Jersey. Don't get eaten peace. by any black bears. Yeah. Love you. Right. <laughs> All, right, man. Too, All right, man. All right, man. Peace. All right, guys. I'll be RB. Uh, you guys enjoy some videos while I uh, while I get ready over here. Um, we're going to be back as soon as possible. <sighs> okay. We got to hurry. All right. I'm looking at the time. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god. All right guys.